have a question for you this morning, church, and that is, do you feel that the world is broken? Now, I know you say in your mind, come on, pastor, this is the most wonderful time of the year, right? Christmas is the time to sing happy songs and to have happy thoughts and to see family and to open presents and to drink eggnog and and eat lots and lots of sweets. Well, friend, I have every intention of offering you happy thoughts. In fact, my aim this morning is to offer you the Prince of Peace. But this peace that he offers, this good news, is is such good news because it offers healing to the brokenness of your soul. And I will not insult you by offering you a Snoopy Band-Aid when nothing short of the divine surgeon is what is needed. And so I ask you once again, do you feel that the world is broken? You know, we often overlook in the joy of the Christmas narrative and nativity that there are deep wounds that lie within. The Magi arriving from the east, following the signs in the heaven, following the star, expect to find Jerusalem and the palace filled with the same excitement that they have. Where is he who was born king of the Jews? But the scene is the opposite. Void of expectation. Jerusalem is slumbering. Messiah? Huh? I don't know. I can't help you. When Herod hears of the visitors from the east, he is alarmed. You see, Herod is historically ruthless and continually paranoid. Gathering the chief priests and the scribes together, they conclude the Messiah is to be born in Bethlehem. But Herod's instructions to the Magi come with hidden malice. Hey, when you find him, come and tell me so that I too can come worship. An angel warns both Joseph and the Magi about the ensuing danger, allowing both to flee. But Bethlehem will have a completely different fate. As the days mount, Herod is obsessed with fear, and it grows until he gives the order. Send my army to ransack every household in Bethlehem and any nearby, killing any male child age two and under. Can you imagine the horror of the scene that night? The fathers that were killed trying to protect their family. The wailing of nursing mothers as they held their now lifeless sons. And for what? Consider the pride and the jealousy and the power struggle of mankind that is willing to slaughter helpless babies for political gain. Consider the brokenness of our world. In 2,000 years, would you say that mankind is any closer to peace on earth? Are we any less prideful? Any less warring to own? Is there any less conflict or political struggle? What about the individual? Is the modern man in all of his sophistication filled with so much peace, so much contentment that he looks back at history and laughs? Sadly, no. Our age is much more characterized by worry and conflict and pride. You see, peace, lasting peace, eludes us as delicate as a bubble blowing in the wind. But friend, what about you? Do you lack contentment and rest, shalom, for your soul? This morning, the scripture pleads with you that your longing for peace is due to the fact that our sin, your sin, separates you from the love of God, from knowing him. And Jesus, 
God's son has been sent as the prince of peace, and he is the peace that your soul longs for. He has come to pay the ransom price so that you might be set free, so that you might have rest, so that you might have that longing in your soul filled with the peace of God, a wellspring for your thirsty soul. In Jesus, you will find a reservoir that actually allows you to overflow to others, allowing you to lay down your pride and put them first, resolving so much strife that's in the world. Suddenly, you can be like Jesus. You can be a peacemaker to others. And the Bible promises that Jesus is coming again to judge the living and the dead, and to punish evil and to make all things right, restoring everlasting peace. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, eternal Father, Prince of Peace. In one of the most dramatic scenes in the whole of the Bible, Revelation chapter 5, it opens with the scene of God on his throne, enthroned in heaven. He is holy. He is perfect. He dwells in unapproachable light. And John the Apostle can only see the scene from a distance, from afar. John has been exiled to the island of Patmos because of his witness for Jesus. And he has suffered greatly. He is away from his family, his friends, his church. And he will die alone. You see, John is the perfect picture of injustice upon earth, man's lack of peace. And in John's vision, God on his throne holds in his right hand a scroll. Now the scroll represents God's unfolding plan for the rest of history. God's plan to bring judgment upon the wicked. His plan to make all the wrongs right again. To bring justice to the oppressed, healing to the broken, redemption to the captive, and to restore all that was lost. It is the question, God, can there be peace on earth? And can there be peace inside me? You see, but the scroll is sealed. And the terms are set. The question is asked, is anyone worthy to approach the throne and to take the scroll and to open it? Is anyone worthy? The silence is deafening. And John begins to weep. He starts slow. And then it builds uncontrollably because he knows what this means, that all of creation is stuck, stuck in the filth and the hurt of sin and conflict, stuck because there is no hope. There is no rest for our souls because no one is worthy. No one ever not even angels or any other created being. And the burden begins to overwhelm John's soul, and he weeps. But John is told, stop weeping. Stop weeping. Because Jesus, the lion from the tribe of Judah, he has come and he has overcome. And John turns and he looks at the throne and coming from within the throne itself, coming out from within the throne is the lamb that had been slain. The lamb that had been slain. And he comes and he takes the scroll and he opens it. And all of heaven erupts in praise. 
and he erupts in victory. They sing and they sing and they sing. Friend, I have narrated that important scene for you because I need to plead with you. Your sin divides you from the love and from the peace of God. And without Jesus, you are stuck. You are stuck in pride and in selfishness and conflict. You are stuck. And if that is you this morning, if when I ask the question, do you have peace and contentment in your soul? If that is you that says, I need that this morning, listen to my next words. God gave his son. That is what we celebrate at Christmas. That is what all of this is about. That's what all of the songs, all of the pageantry, all of it is, an, is a call. It is an appeal to you to say, listen to the good news. God has given his one and only son as a lamb slaughtered and sacrificed for your sin, according to the plan of God, to offer you peace, deep lasting water for your soul, peace. Amen. And God gave, but you must receive. And to receive, friend, is for you to acknowledge your sin. The scripture says, if you will repent and believe, that means bow your knee and worship him. Friend, do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ as your Prince of Peace, as your King? What would change in your life if Jesus became your King? I'm asking you, would you respond to him right now? Did you know that you can do that? Did you know that that is the offer, that, that today is the day of salvation and you can respond to the offer of Jesus Christ right now by simply placing your faith, by crying out to him right now. And if you have never done that and you want to do that right now, I offer you, would you pray with me this? Talk to God, do business with God. Would you say to God, God, I admit to you, I'm a sinner without peace, and that I'm stuck, separated from you. But I've heard good news, and I believe that you have loved me and you sent your son Jesus to die for my sin so that I might be forgiven and I might have peace with you. And Jesus, right now, I bow my knee and I make you my king. And I worship you. And with your help, I will worship you my entire life. Would you forgive me? And would you make me your own?